Hello everyone, today we're going to be reviewing Drive Library and specifically the Quick Start Guide that we provide with the product. So just before we jump into everything, I want to show you where you can download it. If you start on AMC's website, you would go to Products, Controls, and then scroll down to where you can see Product Info under Drive Library. And then scroll down again and near the bottom of the page, you will see Drive Library Quick Start Guide. This is the guide that we'll be going through, so go ahead and start by clicking to download it and you'll need to sign in whenever you do this, but it's a free download. Now that I've shown you where you can download the Quick Start Guide, I'm gonna go through some prerequisites on page four of that Quick Start Guide. So we're gonna be going through what you need to do before we can get started. The first being you need to have Drive Library installed and Driveware installed. Specifically for Driveware, you're gonna need 7.4.1 or greater and that is a free download on our website. The third thing is that you will need Visual Studio. I'm gonna be using Visual Studio Community 2017 because that's a free download from Microsoft's website, but you can use any version 2015 or greater. The final thing you'll need is an AMC Digiflex Performance Servo Drive, and specifically one that supports CAN Open or RS-232 communication. Finally, I won't be reviewing any tuning procedures or specific commissioning of a servo drive, so I will expect that you have one that's ready to run other than some specific drive library configurations, which I will be going through. Since we've reviewed all the prerequisites, we're ready to actually get into opening a project. So for this quick start guide, we're just gonna be reviewing a single project inside of a Microsoft Visual Studio solution so by default, the installer puts all of the Visual Studio solutions into users, public, documents, Drive Library 1.0, demos, and then we call it Drive Library underscore demos dot SLN. Inside of that solution, there are six projects. We're going to be reviewing the Hello Drive project, which is a very simple project, and all it basically does is initialize the drive and reads its active events and finally prints them to the screen. There are five other projects in there that we won't be going through today, but in the quick start guide it does have a review of what those projects are. Now that you've had a chance to open up the demo solution, we're going to review how to configure a project for Drive Library. All these solutions should be configured properly out of the box, but in case you want to make your own solution, this is the steps that you go through. So you'll start by right clicking a project and going to its properties. The first thing I always do is make sure that the Windows SDK version is correct. Sometimes the demos projects don't match what's on your machine, so you'll click this drop down on the right and make sure you select one that's installed on your machine. The next thing you'll need to do is make sure that the include directories are correct. So again, these demo solutions are already configured for you, but if you need to change it to a, a different directory that you installed things to, you're gonna go through and edit it here. After you set the include directory, you're going to set where the linker should look for static libraries. So you'll see this additional library directories path. You'll again click the drop down and edit. And if this is not the correct path, you're going to go here and click new line and add another path. This should all be correct out of the box for our demo solutions though. Finally, with the linker, you're going to need to specify what the static library's name is. So with our demo solutions, it's set to drivelibrary.lib. This is the same static library that you use in your own custom project as well. So now that we've configured a project in Visual Studio, we're going to go into the system browser and we're going to actually load up Driveware and we're going to configure a drive for Drive Library. We're going to start with an RS-232 drive, or ones beginning in DPR or DZR, and we're going to do the only configuration you need to do for these drives, and that is go to your drive name, configuration zero, and change the command source to drive library. You'll hit apply, and if you're connected to the drive, you'll store that to the drive. For a CAN drive, you go through the same process, you start off going to configuration zero, setting the command source to drive library, 
but you're also going to go to settings and make sure it's set to network mode can open so that it can receive commands over the can network you're going to go to network settings you're going to want to set the address so that it's unique on the can bus you'll want to make sure the baud rate matches whatever the baud rate is on the bus and finally set the initial mode of configuration to either none or configuration zero for the addresses if you change that you're also going to want to go to rpdo and load preset drive defaults so that all the default cob ids get loaded properly and you don't have overlapping rpdos on a network you'll do the same thing for tpdos and you'll load preset drive defaults other than that your drive will be ready so you can just store from here and save the file to a known location so that you can access this ADF file later. Now that we've completed configuration and driveware, we're going to need to complete some runtime configuration by editing parameter files. These parameter files are found in your config folder, which is inside the drive library install folder. And again, just like the driveware side, we're going to go through serial first, then go through CAN. So when you're going through serial, the first file you're edit is the serial network com4. This file has all the network parameters and access parameters. And when you first look at the network parameters, the first thing you'll see is the network name. This can be configured to anything you want. The type for RS-232 is zero. And then you'll set the corresponding baud rate to match what's on the drive. The final network parameter will be port, which in my case is com4 but this will be specific to your device. So you'll check this in device manager. So it might be COM3, COM5, et cetera. The next thing you'll do is set access parameters. So you'll give it a name. This will be how it's referenced in C++. You'll give it an address, which for RS-232 is always 63. And then you'll give it a path. So in my case, my ADF file is called serialconfig.adf. This is the driveware file that you saved previously. Now, if you want to change the name of Serial Network COM4, you can. You just need to make sure you go into Serial System and update the path here to match the new name of the ANF file that you created. On the CAN side, we'll go through a similar process. So we'll start with CAN Network. And again, the first thing you'll edit is the network parameters. So you'll give it possibly a unique name. The type will be three corresponding to CAN and the baud rate will be whatever baud rate you set on the drive. And finally, the port will be the port that you find in Device Manager for your CAN drive. Finally, you'll set the access parameters for each CAN access. So the name will be whatever name you want to call in C++. The address will be the address that you set in driveware or with switches on the drive. And finally, you'll set the PVT step size. So this is the distance between PVT points in milliseconds. So valid parameters between 20 and 255 for drive library. The standard should work for most folks of either 50 or 75. Leave spooler interval and status interval to their defaults. And then if you have a custom ADF file that you've saved previously, you'll put the name of it here instead of can config. Now again, if you want to update the name of CAN Network, you'll want to go to CAN System and update the CAN Network name here. So change it from CAN Network to whatever your ANF file name is. Now that we've completed editing the parameter files, we're going to head back to Visual Studio because we have actually completed all the configuration that's needed for Drive Library. So the only thing that's left is updating a few variables so that you can connect to the drive. Those two variables are ASF config file and access name. ASF config file is defaulted to the default location of that file. So if you move that file to a new location, you're going to want to change it here. And this variable accepts both absolute and relative paths. And the relative path is relative to the executable that's running. For access name, if you update the access name from anything other than access one deal demo, you're going to provide that here.
Now that we've completed all the configuration, we're ready to build and run Hello Drive. And before we do that, I'd recommend unloading all these extra projects so that we're only building Hello Drive. And at the top, when you're ready to build, you'll click Build and then Build Hello Drive. Or in my case, I'm going to do Rebuild Hello Drive so you can see the full output to the console. And when you do this, you're going to see a number of warnings pop up. Those warnings can be ignored because they're just saying some debug information is missing for the source code, which is to be expected. After it's successful, you'll see either build one succeeded or rebuild all one succeeded in my case. And now that the build is complete, we can actually go up here and run the program by clicking local windows debugger. This is going to open up a console window. The program is going to connect and initialize the axis and then it's going to print all the access events to the screen. You'll want to put a breakpoint at the end so you can actually see these access events. But when you open them up, you can see it's a number of ones and zeros. Now these don't mean a whole lot to you, but inside of our manual, in Appendix E, there is a list of all the events. So for example, if bit 3 was high, that would be user disable. That would mean that the user disable was one of the active events. And if this doesn't run properly, so if it fails when it runs, the first thing to check is to make sure that you've loaded the DLLs into the debug folder. So you should have these five DLLs inside of your debug folder or else your drive will not initialize. So now we've completed the quick start tutorial and you're ready to begin programming with Drive Library.